Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we're going to take a look at career building. Welcome to the first installment of The Happy Teacher. Today we're going to explore both personal and professional truths. There are some umbrella goals that we want to look at, the three C's. So the first one is courage, and then compassion, and connectedness. So these three are really, really important to guide us in really everything that we do, both in our personal and our professional lives. Courage. When we think of courage, we really want to think about speaking and acting from the heart. Compassion. So compassion, we want to be vulnerable. I always say that if I meet a teacher who thinks that they have it all down, that they have all the answers, that's a teacher who's stopped growing. They don't have the capacity to open anymore and to soften anymore. And so I, th I think that we always have to keep that sense of compassion, that sense that we're vulnerable and that we're connected to other people and that we're open to new ideas, that we're curious. Connection, that we're able to both combine our courage and our compassion to create connection. This is such an important element for our work and with our relationships with our clients. So without the connection, we won't be able to create effective change. So these three concepts, courage, compassion, and connection, are gonna guide us through this journey of the happy teacher. To start to affect change, we have to ask ourselves some pretty tough questions. Our goal is to create a profession that sustains us financially, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And this is a tall order, and it takes really, really digging deep. So these tough questions that we have to, to answer for ourselves it starts with us because we have to get our house in order before we can really start to mentor our clients and to really affect change in our clients. So I'd like you to think about these six questions. And I want you to keep asking yourselves <laughs> these questions. Keep reevaluating and see through the installments of The Happy Teacher how your thoughts and your perceptions shift a bit. And also notice if you are becoming more grounded, if you're able to stand more on your own and be more confident in your teaching. Do you have a personal code of honor? What is it? How is it similar and or different from your professional code of honor? What is your number one reason for devoting time and energy to teaching movement? How do you make what you do in the studio uniquely your own? What holds you back? What about teaching nourishes and gives you energy? What about teaching depletes you? Which one wins at the end of the day? What is your dream scenario for your career? So that's where we start. Get your journal write out your answers. Keep asking yourself these questions and keep reevaluating your answers. Again, really track how your thoughts and your perceptions start to shift as we dig deeper and deeper into the work. Ginger wrote in with a very good and long question. She has a new client. This client uh, was referred to her through the Y. This client sits all day, very out of shape, overweight, has neck, some lower back pain, was with a trainer at the Y, and the work that they were doing lifting weights 
created more pain in the client. So Ginger wants to know how can she start with this client? How can she progress this client? So there's, there's a lot to this question. And the second part of it I'm going to address in a later episode. But simply, how I would start with the information that I'm given is to try and create some new habits in this client. Obviously, the personal trainer had their own agenda and was just giving this client uh, sort of the normal trajectory on how to get in shape. And unfortunately, that model does not fit with a lot of people, especially those clients who are not movers, who sit all day, and who haven't really thought about their bodies and how to move their bodies in a long, long time. Ginger, what I would first do with this client is really to start simply. In the studio, try to get her into positions that are not just sitting. A lot of standing, using the wall for support, four-point kneeling, side-lying. And then I would really challenge her that during the day, she tracks how much she's sitting. And ask her not to sit so much. Try not to sit so much at her place of work or when she's home to try to think of other solutions. Maybe she could create a standing desk, or maybe she could just do some part of her job during the day, standing or walking, to try to think of some creative solutions. Because I guarantee, if she starts to do this, this one simple thing, that a lot of her pain in her lower back and her neck will start to ease up. That's it for today. If you have an observation or a question that you'd like to see answered in an upcoming episode, please comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or the forum on our site. See you next time, and never stop learning.